hey guys, this is Tony, and I said, how about if you help me film the opening and the bumpers of today's episode? And I said yes. It's actually a lot of you may have seen it, but I thought, you know what, a lot of you may not have, because it's only available to see on their website channel. Public Broadcasting had a TV show called Counterculture. It was it was written and done by Grover Silcox. He was very big in broadcasting and stuff, and he said, would you like to be in episode two of my new show? Filmed at Daddy Pop's Diner. Yeah, very good. Talk about pinball. So I said, I think I could do that. I think I could. Food and pinball. Food and pinball go well together. Yeah, two favorite things. So we decided uh, to sh share that episode and what led up to it. First, I just realized that what you're going to see next is the very first live stream I ever did with my cell phone. So this was filmed back in 19, uh, 2019. Historic. And I film, unfortunately, we filmed the live stream this way. <laughs> but that's the way it is. But it shows you the preparations going on behind the show. Here we go. We are live at Daddy Pop's Diner, and we are doing a shoot for a new PBS show called Counter Culture. And they've asked me one of the segments about pinball machines. And this is be where they're gonna, they have the camera set up here. That's Ken. Ken is uh, the owner of Daddy Pops. And this is Steve Palomari. Polara. Polara. Oh God, I booped. <laughs> It's Grammy right. Award winner for children's songs. He's one of the interviewers. Children's Interview. album, best children's best album. One of the producers. Album. And this is Carmen. She's going to make me up. Now, are you going to be able to make my face like good looking again? You're made up. I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be famous. What? Well, I should be famous. I don't know. So it's just me here, so I can't respond. I see everybody saying hello. I thought this would be rather exciting. Daddy Pops is closed with the name of the show is Counter Culture. And this episode will be out in February. And I'll be one three interviews for the half hour show. But uh, I guess I better get made up. Uh, I hope we're going to get food here too. I mean, lots of it, right? We are. I can't answer that question. Anyway, uh, I get made up appropriately in the barber shop chair here. And Beauty Alibi. What's the name of your company? Beauty Alibi. Beauty Alibi. Yes. And where, where are you offering that? Uh, Sixteen was Broad Street in Bethlehem. Uh -huh. And she yes. hires out for makeup. And yes. And she's in charge of making me. Can you do something with my hair? Yes. <laughs> So, anyway, I thought all of you would like to uh, to see my um, debut in public broadcasting. This will actually be my debut. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's, it's rather exciting. We're going to get started. Thanks for viewing. Well, what did you think of that? She was going to make my face up. Well, <clears throat> do you think she could make me pretty for the episode? There must have been a lot of makeup being used. Ah. God bless that he woman. just pointed out the matter, Harry, this is the alternate backlist, the second one. that yes. doesn't have the inscription yes. on the dagger. Yes. There's no inscription. But this is in beautiful condition. It really is very, very nice. Look at the play field. It's, it's like nowhere, nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's beautiful. The hole at the top is, is still pure away. We have not shopped this yet. Oh. So this is actually going to, we have somebody interested in it. So, but anyway. It's a beautiful game, but see, that's not what the video is about. What the video about is about this man. is part two. This is a bumper between. We're now going to show you the commercial I made to get people to watch the show. This is only like a minute, so let's watch that. Hey, this Tuesday I'm going to be on a new PBS TV show called Counterculture 
where I talk pinball. Make sure you watch. Here's a preview. Welcome to Counterculture, a talk show in a diner. A diner is, as far as I'm concerned, is a good old friend. You know what I'd like to order, Grover? What? How about a fine American hamburger? Now, you went to the SAG Awards. Yes, there was a star everywhere. Obama was a very eclectic drinker. Right. And he, they made their own beer at the White House. You never know who you're going to meet on Counterculture. Ah! Do you think the show's going to be good now, Tony? It's fantastic. Well... I think we're ready to show you the actual 10-minute episode. And here's the neatest thing. Grover won not one but two Emmys for the three seasons of this show. Did you get one? No, I got nothing. Oh. I did get breakfast. Oh. Okay, we're okay. ready. Let's watch. Welcome to Counterculture, a talk show in a diner. On this week's episode, we have pinball machine expert Todd Tucky. We sold over 400 machines out of my driveway. All right here on Counterculture. Welcome to Counterculture, the talk show in a diner. I'm your host, Grover Silcox, coming to you from beautiful downtown Hatboro. You know, you never know who you're going to sit next to when you sit at the counter of a diner. You wonder, what kind of world does this person live in when they're not inside this small eatery? Well, my first guest lives in a world of games, arcade games, pinball in particular. He is the owner of TNT Amusements. They buy, restore, and sell vintage pinball machines. He's also the star of his own YouTube series on the world of pinball and other games. Todd Tucky, welcome to the counter. Thanks, Grover. My pleasure. <laughs> so why do people play pinball? Ooh, a lot of reasons. What is the allure? The colors, the sounds, the theme, uh, the excitement of controlling this heavy steel ball as it, 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 you shoot for certain objects on the field, you try to complete certain goals in the game, but just overall enjoyment. Right. I mean, in a world of video games, it's astounding that people still want to play it. Well, actually, it's coming back again. Mm -hmm. There was a period of time where there was a lull, but the interest in pinball is, is continually growing as you see all these retro arcades opening up all over the country and the world. When were they first invented? 1935, mm -hmm. 34, 35, when they were called pin tables. There were no flippers. And the way you controlled the ball was actually by shaking the machine, oh, hence really? the tilt. If you shook it too much, even in 1935, you could tilt the machine out That's and you right. would lose that ball. So when was the heyday of pinball? That would have to be 1981. Mm -hmm. That's when six pinball manufacturers in the United States alone manufactured 181,000 machines. And that's not counting overseas manufacturers either. Wow, and how many do they sell today, you say? Well, everybody keeps like a tight lip on that. Uh -huh. The largest manufacturer in the country right now is Stern Pinball. And we're guessing they make between eight and 10,000 machines a year. All the other manufacturers, believe it or not, Grover, are boutique pinball manufacturers. Little tiny companies that make small runs of right. specific machines. For instance, do you remember the old marionette show, Thunderbirds? Mm -hmm. Well, they released Thunderbirds or Go, but there's only going to be 500 of them, period. The old TV cartoon show, The Jetsons, they yes. only made 300, and that's it. No wow. more. How much are they worth? Uh, they actually are more reasonable because they're s more simple machines. They sell for about 6,000 brand new. Wow. That's your cheapest pinball machine. Is that right? Who and buys them today? Well, when this industry started, pinball machines were manufactured to make money, period. They were not made for home entertainment. They were designed to make money for the person who bought it. Right. And it was in an arcade or an amusement arcade, center. It could have been in a little candy store, uh -huh. anywhere. Pretty did they much. grow up around these machines? Sort people of? did, and people learned to love them. Uh -huh. Most of the machines manufactured in the whole world today are made for the home. They're actually going right from the brand new factory machine to a home, a game room. 
How about that? Now, your TNT amusement, you buy, restore, and sell them, right? Reconditioned Are machines. they vintage? Is that what they are? Yes. Uh, we, we made a decision to sell only 1977 and newer. 1977 was the year Grover where they got rid of all the relays and switches and they went to electronics. So we don't sell anything older than, what was it, 43, 42 years ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's our newest machine, <laughs> our oldest machine. So now, uh, we decided to, to fill that niche of the market, but that's a lot of machines still. Right. We've actually sold now to the home market over 26,000 machines since we opened uh, many years ago. Right. Now, do you have some famous clients? Uh, we do. We've uh, uh, sold games to um, Kendra Wilkinson. Uh, we actually, I appeared in one of her shows. Is that right? Yes, that was, that was pretty interesting. <laughs> Ryan Adams uh, bought a bunch of games a singer, from us. He's singer. a singer. Yeah. Current. Didn't you tell me you sold one to Reince Priebus, the former chief of staff of well, Donald Trump? I just sold it to him. <laughs> uh, he's buying What did he buy? Machines. What kind of machine did he buy? Monster Bash, uh -huh. a limited edition, okay. which are just under 10 grand. Right. And what are the features, we should know the terms, of a pinball machine? Pinball machine is basically a body Okay. Where the play field is. The play field. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where the That's where the flippers are. Mm -hmm. and, and the ball rolls around. Mm -hmm. The head of the machine in the back, which contains the electronics, and then there's four legs that support the machine. Right. So if somebody says the, the problem is in the head, they know it's probably behind the glass where the electronics are. That's right. Now, your craftspeople actually restore these machines, correct? Yes. Our, our men and women that work at TNT we repaint play fields or cabinets as, as we see fit. We, a lot of parts are remanufactured so we can actually rebuild things on the play fields, cleaning them and restoring them. Because if you think about it, everybody's heard of the Adams Family and many people have played the pinball right, machine. The old uh, TV sitcom. Right. But it was made only one year in 1991. Wow. So if you want an Adams Family, you have to buy a 1991 pinball machine and that's a long time ago so you have to bring something like that back to life you have the play field has to be cleaned uh, mechanics have to be rebuilt this is all what we do at TNT right now where can people play today you know in the old days they were ubiquitous right Every, there were everywhere. game centers everywhere or, or arcades I guess as they were called really well that's the exciting thing for the first time and I actually predicted this uh -huh. 20 some years ago there are now flat rate arcades opening everywhere in the country and the world. A flat rate arcade is unique. You pay a flat charge to get in, right. and then you play anything you want free. Right. It used to be a quarter. A quarter that or, was 50, it. Cents. or That's 50 cents. 50 cents. And there is a museum? Yes. Silver Bowl Museum in Asbury Park, right on the boardwalk, open year round. It's marvelous. In Las Vegas is the Pinball Hall of Fame where hundreds of machines are set up. I have videos on my YouTube channel that show all these places too. But then now there's all these local places in Philadelphia area alone. Right. You can look these places up and go in. Now we'll also rent uh, out our showrooms for private parties too, for got people it. that want to play pinball got or it. video games. Mm -hmm. And you got started selling pinball machines out of your home in Northeast Philadelphia. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, out of my driveway. My partner and I at the time, we were in big financial trouble and we had all these games and nobody was playing them. So I said, let's see if we can sell some of these. So I rolled a couple games out to the curb, put a big for sale sign on, and that started a four month frenzy of where we sold over 400 machines out of my driveway. During the week, I covered them with tarpaulins. Right. And then on the weekend, we uncovered them and we plugged them in and we had people all over. And that, that showed us that there was a huge home market. I, I literally invented the home sales market How back then. And, and when did you first get started with pinball machines? It Was it school? Just started 40 years ago in 1979 is when I bought my first machine to make money on, where I put them in location. Wow. And, uh, was it school, Temple? I was at Temple at the time. Temple University. But I fooled around with pinball, but not as a business. So when I was 15 years old, 
I had an old mechanical pinball machine that we played with, but there was never any interest to make it a business. It was just something to have around the house to have fun with. Right. But the business part started in 79. Right. Todd, thanks for joining us at the counter. And ah. I'm going to invest in that new Beatles pinball machine. That's only what, $100,000? That's it, plus tax and freight. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you would love it. Todd Tucky, master of the pinball world. Well, that's our show. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to join us next week when we'll have more guests and surprises on Counter Culture. Well, there it is. Did you enjoy it? It's fantastic. Best 10 minutes of my life. Right? Listen, the good news is I am now going to be in a brand new show Grover is working on right now, TV's Talking History. We already filmed it, and the station owner was so pleased with the footage, he not only wants me to be the, in the opening episode, but instead of half of the show, I'm the whole show. Well, I'm going to be a star, finally. Finally, thank goodness. What do you think my mother would think? I heard your mother's very strong. Really? She raises dumbbells. Oh! <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll let you know when my new show comes on PBS. Good night. Don't have to go home, but you can't stay here!